same meal. For a little overview of what we're going to do today, first we're going to talk about the content of a website and why it's important and why you need good content. The accessibility, usability, appearance, organization, and how to get your website seen. And then we're going to have you guys go throughout the difference between a good and a bad website. It's just a little overview of what we're doing today. Well, let's get started. So, first, first topic is your content quality. There's four main points that I got here for making sure you have the best content for your website. First is to have your all of your content on your website short and organized. Short is probably one of the biggest things for especially someone who's just visiting your website for the first time. They don't want to read endless amounts of paragraphs on your website. They want to know the details that they need to know so they can decide like whether they're going to like invest in your company or whether they want to partner with your company or um, or do some take services from your company. And then making sure it's organized so that um, the, uh, the person can find what they need to find on your website, whether it's your home page or about page <coughs> or um, or any others any other pages that you might need to have, depending upon what your company is doing. Now consistently updating your information is key, especially because your, your business is always going to change your person or, or any kind of website that you're creating. Things are always going to change, even if you're, uh, you're a person that's doing concerts, you're, you're, uh, you're a band, um, you're consistently going to possibly have new tours, you're going to have new dates, and if people don't know when you're going to be, uh, when, you, when you're going to be doing certain events, then no one will show up. And the use of second person is really good because you're talking straight to the person that's that's going to be viewing that website using uh, using especially a lot of words like you or yours. Um, it's it's speaking directly to that person instead of using. I mean, of course, you can use like uh, third person, first person, but um, from the research that we've done, using second person is, is something that is really really going to help you out when you're creating a website. And finally, the easiest one, don't have any grammar mistakes. The easiest way that any person can, you can just get immediately turned off is having even one grammar mistake. Like I, I, re I received an email today um, from like, it was a prospective employer. And when I was reading through the email, there were multiple grammar mistakes in the email. And immediately I was turned off, like this has to be probably a scam because of that. And that, that can easily be done if you have that in your website. You can, um, when, you, when, you, when you look and see that there's other the grammar mistakes, it's an easy turn off for um, any person that's going to be doing your website. Yeah, let's move on. So accessibility is another important part of a website, um, and what accessibility means is that every person has equal access to your web content. Now this could be um, older age people that don't have very much knowledge when it comes to you know, online or computers at all, so you're going to want to make sure that your website is easy to navigate and easy to understand for them. Um, this can also mean people with disabilities, and that could be from people with Down syndrome that are shipping the web to someone that broke their hand and can't use their other hand. So it's kind of a wide variety and you're going to want to make sure that your website is, um, or that all these different people have equal access to your information. Um, so another thing under your accessibility is that all devices can see this web content. So if you're using your phone, I don't know how many of you have done that where you been on your phone and got to a website and it's not the same or the information is just not there. It's really frustrating because I mean, you can't carry a laptop or a desktop around with you. So that gets really frustrating. Um, and a way to uh, make your website accessible on multiple devices is by using a responsive layout. Um, and this means that the website just responds to what device um, is logging onto the website. So if you're on a phone, it responds to the size of your screen and it just accommodates. Um, same with a laptop or a tablet. The other part is to have a dedicated mo mobile um, website, which is just a separate website completely that's specific for um, the mobile device. So like app stores, when you do that and you get web content on there, that's like a separate um, website per se. So then another thing about accessibility is you're going to want to look at the navigation. Um, you're going to want to make sure that it's easily or easy to move around. 
um, that has a page hierarchy, which we talked about this in document design, that the most important content is at the top. Um, you're going to want to make sure that there's clickable buttons, and I guess that's the functionality that everything works. So if you have a clickable button, you're going to want to make sure that button actually works. You don't just get frustrated over something small like that. Um, and then you're going to want to follow the three click rule. And this is where if you go on a website and you can find whatever content you're looking for within the website within three clicks or less. So that you're not constantly go going under every tab and then looking for all this stuff. It's, you should be able to find it within three clicks. Um, so the last thing you want when it comes to accessibility and you make a website, the last thing you want is for your um, consumers to get frustrated because like I said before, click over buttons don't work, or that your page is hard to navigate. Um, you know, you might have an elderly person like a your grandma or somebody sitting on <laughs> Facebook, for instance. Like, I know my grandma has no clue how that works, and she gets really frustrated and always wants me to teach her how that works. Well, and I get frustrated because she doesn't understand it like I do. So you have to take that into consideration that you're going to really have to figure out who the audience is and make sure that they can easily maneuver through your website. Um, and you don't want to get a bad rep that people with disabilities, like I said, it can range from someone with Down syndrome or someone with a broken hand. It's not specific um, disabilities. But you don't want to get a bad rep that someone like that can't use your website. That could make your business go downhill right away. Um, before I move on, uh, to give an example of something like a mobile website, if you've ever accessed like e-services or D2L, if you access on your phone, it looks totally different than you would on your de on your desktop. Now there is an option to go to the desktop version, but just to give an example, is, is, is that something that you would possibly want to do uh, when creating a website? And I mean that's a good thing to add to your website if you don't want to have the um, where it just responds to the device that's using it, where you can have an option where it says go to the desktop version. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then moving on to usability, um, there are five things, five things um, that you're going to want to make sure that are there. You're going to want to make sure it's easy, simple, fast, consistent, and logical. And I'm going to go through all three of them. They kind of overlap, or five of them, sorry, overlap with um, what Sam said. So when you think of easy, you're going to want to make sure that it's easy to read, easy to navigate, and easy to understand. Um, so like I said earlier, with accessibility, you're going to want to make sure that you can make your way through the page with no problems. Um, and then going into simple, you're going to want to make sure that it's simple. Um, simple is key. You don't want too much content on your home page that's taking people or distracting people. Um, like if you put a bunch of pictures on your home page, but then you have like a really important quote, a really important information that you have written on your home page, you want people to see that, like what they're about, what they're for. You're not going to want as many pictures because it's distracting and people aren't going to read the content. Um, and so going to that too, when you look at this, people, according to Shorty Designs, um, people tend to look at the left top side of the website. <laughs> um, so you're not going to want to put a lot of content on the top right or the bottom right. Thank you. <laughs> Um, just because it's not seen as much. I'm not saying that you don't want any content over there because that's going to look really weird, but you're going to want your most important stuff on the top left. Top left. Um, and then, let's see. Um, so, <laughs> moving into the fast part, you're going to want to make sure your page is fast loading. Um, this, you might think you don't have control over this necessarily, but there are things that you can do to make sure your, play, your page works faster. Uh, one of those things is uh, you can change your, optimize your image size. So if you have images, you can make them smaller, and that helps your page work faster. Um, according to the Spritz Web Designs, which is the website that we have you look at, your page should load in 20 seconds or less. And if it takes longer than that, then it said that more than half your viewers are going to just because they get frustrated because things don't load fast enough. I know I get frustrated if things don't work fast enough. Go to a different website. <coughs> so then, um, to minimum minimal scroll. This is also on your main page. Um, if you have a lot of content that you want on there, instead of just placing content and content and content and having people scroll through it, put links to this content so that your 
homepage is shorter because, like you said before, it's supposed to be just keep it um, very nice, simple, and just right there. You don't want people to have to scroll for what they're looking for. So then, moving into the logical part, um, you're going to want a logical hierarchy. So obviously, the most important part on the top. Um, and then you're going to want to make sure, and this is kind of common sense to me, I feel like, but something you might not be. Um, for a menu, you're going to want your menu on the top of the screen, not the bottom, not the side. You're going to want it on the top so people see it right away. And then you're going to want to limit your menu items to 10 or less so that there's not so many different pages that they can go to or so many different options they can see. You want to make sure it's 10 or less so it's simple and it's there. Um, and then I saw that I missed consistent. So I'll go back to that one. Sorry for that. Um, consistency is key. This is something we've heard in multiple classes. Um, you're going to want to make sure your website is consistent, whether it's terminology, whether it's the logo, colors. You want to make sure it all fits together, otherwise it gets confusing, distracting, and you're just not, viewers aren't going to get the content that you want them to get on your website. All right. Okay, that's it from okay so I'm going to go over appearance. And appearance is a pretty important thing on a website. It's kind of like if you go on a first date and you've never seen the person before, and like you look at their appearance for the first thing you see, you kind of judge them by their first appearance. So the same goes for a website. If you have an ugly website, you, most people typically won't go back. They get attracted to pretty websites, like people get attracted to pretty people. So for appearance is, um, you want to look polished and professional, like if you're going into a job interview, you want to look polished and professional. Same goes for a website. And a good use of color, so using one to two primary colors is um, typically the main thing that gets people to look at the website. Like, if you have like five or six colors and your eyes are kind of going everywhere, and if you just stick to like white and blue or like black and white it's just more simple and people will be able to read it easier so that's an important thing for appearance another important thing is that text is easily read so like on word when you get your different text options if you choose the like the really fancy ones that are just extremely hard to read but look pretty cool that probably would be the best for your website you want to use a more basic text that majority of the people that are viewing your website are going to be able to read without a problem so meaningful graphics and quality photography. So if you have a ton of graphics on a website, it just kind of gets annoying. It, I guess it depends for the website. Like if you're a graphics company, then you might have more graphics than like a paper company. But um, you do want to have graphics to appeal the eye so people aren't looking at just a page with text on it because that can get boring even for people who are older. And like you want to look at something. You want to be able to see something and say, oh, that's kind of cool. And then you be able to read the text. And quality photography, I guess it just depends on your website. So if you have a photography website, you're going to want to use good pictures that describe who your company is and like what you stand for instead of just random pictures. And then simplicity, like Haley talked about earlier, that's a really important thing for a website because if you have too much going on, it's going to turn away people. And take advantage of white space. I mean, you don't have too much, but it is important that you do have some where people can still read your text. If you have too many things going on, people might not be able to find your text or will just get distracted and they won't know what you're trying to say to them. So that's a really important thing for appearance. The next thing I'm going to talk about is organization. A really important thing for organization is your headers. It's one of the first things people see for a website. So that would be like your um, about us, contact us, um, map. And um, the important ones you want to have are the About Us page, the privacy policy, if you have one for your company, a contact page, and a sitemap. You want to make sure you have those on your website because those are pretty much the basic things. And if you need to, you can expand from there just depending on what your company is and what they want to say to the public. And you want to have um, yeah, just a not messy website, just something that's easy to read, like I said before, for appearances. And building trust with your website is really important. Trust and credibility with your users, um, that's a super important thing. And one thing you can do with that is like have a brand logo. So if you do have like a logo, that can build trust with your users, just saying like that's kind of what people will know you by. So like if they see that somewhere, like then they know that it's your website and your company, and that's a really important thing. 
and then you want to have unique content that keeps people coming. So if you, let's say you have an organization that might be like the same, but just a different company. So like you have two like fast food restaurants and you both have the same website. You want to have something unique, different from your opponents that will keep people going to your website instead of someone else's website. Because you can all say the same thing for your organization, but it depends on what you say that gets the viewers to see more. Next thing I'm going to talk about is how to get your website noticed. So, like, if you search on Google, you guys usually go to the first page and don't typically scroll through two, three, four, five, six pages of those. Like, the first page is the most seen on Google, and that's what people go to. They think it's the most credible and the most popular. That's why people are going to go to it. So, how to get your website on the first page of Google? So, search engine or optimization is SEO, and that's the term I'm going to be using for this. So, on-site SEO. Um, what you do on-site of your website affects 50% of your usage, and what you do off-site affects the other 50%. So, um, keyword research is a really important thing. You want to use good keywords that people can search for your website. So, ones that are pretty popular are really important to use because if you're going to search a keyword on Google and that is in your website a lot, it's going to pop up more on Google whether you use more harder words that people aren't going to think of to search. And then highly informative content is a really important thing because if you do just have basic content that anyone can really think of, it's people aren't going to go to your website and the usage isn't going to be very high, so it's just pretty much going to stay on those pages five and six on Google. And then um, website structure, like I said earlier, an organization, you're going to want to have a very good website structure. So for off-site SEO, the other 50% of search rankings come from off-site being off-site and what you do outside of your website. So um, links are a part of getting your website on Google and um, Google regulates the quality of your links through algorithm updates. So if you have bad links and your website is taking you to, to like Wikipedia or something that typically isn't like very credible, Google isn't going to put it up on your um, on their first page because if you're having a bunch of links that are just going to random places that don't make sense for your website that are just going to be a waste of people's time, it doesn't. Um, Google like tracks that so they'll know where you're taking them. And then um, social media is also a big thing, but that's um, it's a pretty basic one. So if you have like a, if your company has like a Twitter account, a Facebook page, like even like a Snapchat or something, you can put your link to your website or like um, a business card that like, you can put your link to your website and that can get shown a lot, have more viewers. And then user experience is a big one. Optimizing your website for your user is also very important. So you got to know your public when you have a website. So if you have a website for like a paper company, Who's going to be looking at your website? It's going to be buyers that need paper, and you're going to want to optimize it for your users instead of like teenage kids or something. So you would want to just kind of create it for them. And then another big one is Google observes how many people interact with your website. So that's also a very big thing of getting your website noticed. So they track down how many people view your website a day. And if you use like your social media and stuff like that, that's going to get people to go on your website. And that just gets it higher up on like those pages. And Google uses Google Analytics. And it allows you to learn the um, location demographics of your audience and like what websites are being used, keywords, search engines, and um, that gets sent to your website. And that's really important because it shows how effective your content is so you can improve. So websites use that a lot because like if you're not getting many searches and people aren't going to read your content, like that tells you saying like you need to change something so people know what you're doing and so you're like providing for your public. So that's how you get your website noticed. And um, like I said, people are choosing keywords that find out search value. Okay. So. We're going to have you guys in your groups go. Oh, yeah. So I don't know anyone who's ever used Google <coughs> Analytics, but it's not just as easy as like using it. Like, right. It is intense to yeah. use Google Analytics. You yeah. have to be certified. You have to go through so many classes and steps. And 
can't just, like the other day, I was, for my campaign, I was going to use Tag Manager. It is like a foreign language. <laughs> so it's not as easy as it sounds. If you're going to get your website, you need to use like extensive research to use the analytics program. Yeah, you need to get, you need to get analytics like certified to use it. Yeah. We did our e-marketing class, we had to be certified. Oh, and that was the worst thing I've ever had to do. Yeah. It's a lot. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> it is terrible. I have a question about that. Do you know, I don't know if name is. Sarah. Sarah. Um, do you know how you get certified? Sorry. You can actually go on there. I believe on. I think Denise yeah. paid for ours. Didn't Denise pay for ours, though? So no, it's good. Yeah, you have to, like, oh, it, go you on. Have to pay for I don't remember if you have to pay for it or not. We had to do it for class. You have to go on there, and you have to take, um, so many hours of it, and there's yeah. videos, and there's like all these phases you have to go through. And the one day, I thought I was like going on to the end. I had to like finish part one of phase one. I was like, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's very long, but it's worth it. Like, yeah. like Google sure Analytics is amazing. Free, but then if you don't pass it the first time, then you have to like wait a week. It looks yeah. like there's courses in it. Yeah, and you have to update it. Like I think I believe it's every year or something. Like once. That. Yeah, you really do. It's pretty. It's, it's a lot. lot. But like it is it's really a lot. Of <laughs> So for our yeah. exercise, um, this is kind of similar to the Facebook. We're going to have you look at Meyer Electric. Um, if you do it, you can go on the page. You can just type in Meyer Electric. It's the only page. Um, and it's pretty, I mean, it's simple, but um, it's almost too simple. So what we want to do is have you look over it with your group and um, come up with some suggestions according to the content that we just taught you, um, things that we think they could do to improve it, or things that you might like. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. If you have questions, we'll go up here. Right. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Going off of what Sabrina just said, um, yeah, having, because it's like since we're in rural Minnesota, it's all like word of mouth yeah. a lot of times. So like having a picture of Mike Meyer, because it's probably more than one, and then you're like, oh, I saw this guy at the grocery store or something, and then being like, and then seeing his picture, or like having, expanding on the about, like information, like, because they've been in business a decent amount of years. So like, saying like, we've been in business for, 10 years and we really love what we do and we offer these services kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Credibility is pretty important in your role. Yeah, exactly. Um, we thought that the map that they have kind of looks like they had a lot of extra room so they just made this really huge map. <laughs> yeah, it could be a lot smaller and then they could just click on it and be yeah. redirected to it. So you could add a picture or something there instead. There's no customer agreements or yeah. customer Contracting license down at the bottom so you know that they're a legit company. Yeah, yeah. I mean, also, simple logo. I mean, I like the color. Okay, so um, like we've got that. Yeah, we've got that. Yeah, we've got Services. Yeah, exactly. Um, they are consistent though, like with their colors. Um, the logos are, but yeah, there's definitely some things that they can improve to make it more trustworthy or more um, appearing or appealing. Do we say it's mobile friendly? It, it is. I don't think they. It is. It, it is, is mobile friendly. It, it is. It's yeah. just kind of like all. Condensed. It's about the same thing. Yeah, it's it's just fits to your screen. But the numbers and the emails do work. Yeah. So. That's good. Maybe they're open for you One thing cool, cool is that like, you can put up um, like previous work experience that they've done, which I thought was a really good idea. So that was cool. Especially because it's Marshall and then you know, they worked at Props you know the pub and did the lighting in the pub and then you guys found it. Oh. Okay, so this So if you guys want to type in anything for us, you can see it more clearly and kind of you can explore it yourself. What? So what so so one of the things so that we tried to do yeah. is we tried to keep all of, our, our, all of our businesses <laughs> local in Marshall. So like the business that you're going to be working with tomorrow from with our webpage is from Marshall. Um, the Meyer Electric is from Marshall. And the Hitching Post only has a few locations, and one of them is in Marshall. So kind of what we want to go over here is like, they have their logo up on the top left, which is right next to all their tabs, which is really important because people look at the tabs, so you're going to see the logo. And they have a great big picture right there, some food, and it looks pretty tasty, so that's pretty appealing. And um, their tabs are just really easy to um, have a lot of information on them. And their backgrounds are nice, and it brings you right to the other menu. They have the price of their food, which I think is really um, helpful. Yep. Especially with their audience. So you guys can take a look at it. And just Another thing, um, Chelsea Impressions by Chelsea, which is done by Chelsea Long, um, who is from here in March. I don't know if she's asking you, but um, she actually created this page for them. So it's kind of a little information about how the website or who created the website. If you're interested in getting to know more information from Chelsea Lund on Tuesday mornings at the library, she's been hosting free trainings on social media. She calls it the social media breakfast. It's available for anybody who wants to come. She does ask that you register so she knows how many people to uh, consider attending. It's once a month, and there's fantastic information that's shared there. It's a great way to stay up on trending information, things that have changed, things that you may not have thought about. Um, it's a good place to just go and exist as a fly on the wall and maybe potentially even make some networking opportunities. Um, and Amber, uh, it's April 11th at 8 a.m. This is this upcoming one, yeah. Then there's one in June too, I think, or May or two, right? I don't know. I got April wrote down. <laughs> I think she just got the, the May one up as well. I 
And then one thing I want to go over here on the contact us page, they have all their locations, which is really nice because <coughs> instead of just focusing on like we are in Marshall, but they have all of them so you can look at all of them. And see on the bottom of the page that they have their tabs here, so you don't have to, like, I guess it's still right there, but it's just another like accessibility thing that's it's easy to go to, which is, it doesn't have to be there, which but it's nice. And like on the right here, or I guess, yeah, um, they have like their social media tabs, which I think that's really important, especially for like the younger age, people want to go to that a lot. So yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. So that's an example of our good and bad websites. Mm -hmm. Hi guys, have any questions? Yeah. So you said that um, for like the tabs to keep them under 10, did you get any or find any research that like, so most of the time tabs have sub tabs, mm -hmm. um, was there any limitations that you found with that? So like have less than 10 and less than um, they didn't really go into that where I found this information. They just said less than 10 because if you click on, like, well, there's this kind of different, but if you click on, like, menu and then it went down, it dropped down forever because you have 20 different things under there, it just gets to be too much and you kind of like, lose track of where you're trying to go or you don't exactly know what tab the information you're looking for would be under. Um, so they say keep it under 10 because that keeps the simplicity down and you can. Um, usually find the information you're looking for under these 10 tabs and it's usually pretty obvious which tab it would be under. They didn't go under sub tabs, but I But 10 is probably be, kind of a change. Yeah, those would be a goal too. I know. Any other questions? Um, one thing that we noticed here the last time. Um, so when we first started looking for a good website, I'm not trying to throw you on the bus or anything, but right. Sam found a website from the city. So I don't know, I think it was like a uh, cleaning. Zero, zero risk carpet cleaning. Yeah, so a carpet cleaning company. And um, when we looked at the website, it looked like this huge company like was done really well. And so we kind of got confused because we didn't know if it was a small business or a large business. And since the website that you're going to be working with on um, Wednesday is a small business, we want to keep it small. Whereas that's why we kept it local so you guys know like it would be mostly in that big or uh, like a it's in Marshall, it's not that big, it's not like a corporate old company. Yeah. Yeah.